it's just Jersey, man. We're a different breed. Place. Who doesn't want to win in Jersey? What's up, everybody? Breakdown from the Barn is back. We're here, episode 24. With me, as always, coming off a big football win, the greatest mind in wrestling, Eric Winuck. Uh, his, his team just, just took it East football. He's coaching there, too, has, has all the mind. And we got a big guest in here, Eliezer Laser D. DeLuca. How you make it, how you make it out, Eliezer? Doing awesome. Thanks for having me on. Nice, glad we got you on. So, um, you know, you, you've been a, a big hit at the rack, uh, instant fan favorite, really exciting style. We loved watching you. You know, why don't you tell us first about uh, the transition? You took a different journey, you know, you're, you're from the West Coast in Oregon, uh, went to community college, then to Northern Colorado, and then you made your way over to the East Coast. Why don't you tell us about um, that journey, the decision making, how you ended up at RU? Yeah, I actually took a gap year right after uh, high school. Your buddy David Vizzini uh, actually hooked me up at the Olympic Training Center, and I lived out there the year that they were training for the 2012. That summer, I moved, I mean, two days after I graduated, I went out to Colorado. Crazy story. I actually hitchhiked, and uh, two hippies picked me up, <laughs> took me out to the training center, and I lived with Chase Pammy, John Reeder, and the Paulson brothers, Win Mahalik all summer. And it was just a crazy experience because here, you know, small town Oregon wrestling, and I get thrown out there and uh, it was it was awesome. I got to work with Coach Slay and Coach Zadik and, you know, really got to wrestle with all these awesome competitors at that time. And, uh, you know, then after that, I, I, I was originally committed to Iowa State out of there. And uh, had some stuff happen with the clearinghouse. And I didn't end up getting into Iowa State. So I ended up back at Clackamas Community College in Oregon. Coach Roden, um, who's now at Oregon State, recruited me out there. Had a pretty successful career out there. Took uh, fourth and second at the Junior College Nationals. And uh, transferred out to Northern Colorado. And uh, just wasn't, you know, wasn't really the right fit. I mean, Coach Nickerson and I, we talk quite a bit now but at the time you know he was young in his coaching career and we were we were closer in age than some of the kids even on the team so I ended up uh deciding to transfer and my college nemesis Richie Lewis hit me up and said yo come out here wrestle 149 for us let's get it going yeah took a visit out there I remember uh you know Donnie Pritzloff picked me up I'm like dude I got Donnie out here I got Richie Lewis I got Anthony Ashnold. I'm it's a no brainer. I got to go there. I got to, I got to make this move. And I, I made it and it was, you know, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Yeah. I'll I tell you what, Laser, it was, it was when you came over and you talk about Richie Lewis, cause he took a similar route, um, you know, did very well kind of in, in the Juco route came the Rutgers had two really strong years in the program. So following his footsteps and wrestling at the rack, which is now obviously, you know, uh, Jersey Mike Serena. What was that environment like coming into the rack? Because for me, one of my big memories, which we're going to talk about is obviously the big lat drop you had, you know, Mike Malley kind of talked about him behind the dirt, but just having that environment in the rack in Jersey Mike Serena, why don't you talk about that and just what that meant to you as a wrestler? I mean, I don't, grass or gravel, man. I, I'll wrestle anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That, that never really got to me. I mean, the fans were awesome in the rack you know the environment was awesome one of the first things I actually remember was you know the first year I got there uh my red shirt year and I remember seeing uh Kelly Ripa in the stands and I'm like wow this is this is professional sports to New Jersey yeah. it's professional it's a professional sporting event and that was really that was really cool but again like it doesn't matter how big the stage where it was it's it's just another match yeah, and that's great. And guys, if you hear some yelling in the background, I don't have, uh, you know, some dungeon down there or something. I got a play date going on downstairs. I got Brian Lauer here, former Rutgers wrestler with his six-year-old and my four-year-old. I think they're going at it. So apologize for that. But um, yeah, you came in. I mean, I, I know we love we loved watching you. You came in 149. Uh, why don't you tell us about that weight class? That's historically one of the top weight 
definitely the top weight class at Rutgers, historically top wrestlers in that weight class. Why don't you talk a little bit, bit about you filling in in that weight class, as well as what do you think about that weight class for Rutgers this, this year with Anthony White coming in? Any any knowledge there? Anthony White, that's my boy. I mean, you know, that uh, that whole that whole summer during, during you know, the COVID uh, you know, crisis, he, we were training, we were training, we, uh, Jackson Turley, we were, we were training, uh, Scott Del Vecchio, Anthony Ashnall, and it was actually really cool to see him grow and, de and develop and, you know, win the state title that year. And then, you know, head, head to Rutgers and, and yeah, he's going to be a force at 149 pounds. Definitely don't sleep on that kid because he is working. He never stops working. Yeah. And yeah. I could tell yeah. you, Growing up, growing up about, you know, a few minutes from South Plainfield, those guys are just hard nosed wrestlers. That's a great group of guys that came up through the program and white coming up behind them. So, um, yeah, we were I can tell you right now, John, and I were really excited when he first took the mat this year and the, the red shirt he, the year he had last year. So a lot of stuff to look forward to there. Yeah. And, uh, to you know, to go back to your question about, you know. 149 being the toughest weight class uh, at Rutgers, I mean, that's a, you know, a no-brainer. You had, uh, you know, Anthony Ashton, Kent Thebold. I mean, now Anthony White, myself at one point, and uh, yeah, it's 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 nails. John, what did you wrestle? Uh, I was one forty-nine back in the day. Oh, there you go, there you wins, go. baby. You know, so yeah, so we got we we we, we that goes way back, probably a little bit before yeah. you were born, you know. But but big big yeah, things right. are always happening at one forty-nine. So um. I know you mentioned, you know, you're training with these high school kids back in the day, um, coming in the room, tough as nails. Um, tell us about what you've got, got going on now. you got the Dragon Wrestling Club happening. Why don't you tell us about that? Um, you know, how, how's that working? Well, I started the Dragon. Uh, well, it was originally the Bergen Area Dragons out of uh, Bergen Catholic High School and uh, recently changed it to the Dragon RTC, just a little bit more universal. And we work with youth wrestlers. Um, I don't have any high school kids in, in my club. I just, it's, it's a youth development program. And, uh, you know, when they go to high school, they're going, they're, they're going to be developed, ready, ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're, we're currently in a spot down in, uh, Eatontown, New Jersey. We got a nice warehouse space. I got some guys actually in there rolling jujitsu right now. Nice. Uh, so it's going, it's going good, but we do, uh, we do weekend training. We do, two two hour sessions a day on the weekends saturdays and sundays and we have a whole written out system uh you know i have the coaches that i've allowed into the system that i call the dragon trainers and in order to get your dragon certification you have to go through the process uh jackson turley at Rutgers right now he's currently going through the process to get his dragon certification uh scott del vecchio has his dragon certification Anthony Ashnall has his dragon certification and Paul Yamato has his dragon certification. So it's, it's more so than uh, it's, it's a, it's our system and it's how we coach and how we w want certain things done in certain areas, high crotch, single leg, you know, snap down. And we all have our own little twist to add, add to it uh, as well. And uh, it just works really well. We've, we've had, it's, we've had the results. It's worked. Well, it's yeah, got to be great to have young to have those young kids have that kind of, you know, kind of coaching in their corner and have that level of athlete. It's got to be great for the kids to be able to experience that kind of wrestler. So great job all around. And I'm sure those kids are really looking forward to it. Yeah. And I, I like what you said about making sure there's like a certification process because you mentioned some great names there. Right. And you might say, OK, well, you know, Anthony Ashnall, Jackson Turley, these guys don't need to. To, to learn anything, but when you're developing a, a, a system and you're developing kids, um, you kind of want to get the coaches all on the same page and you got to get right. them uh, training and understanding what you're going to teach the kids, because if they're getting six different ideas uh, from six different people, and like you said, everyone's going to have their own little twist, but at least there's some uh, basic uh, fundamental that is uh, you know, steering everybody together to get these kids kind of, kind of moving forward and getting them some, some, uh, structured, uh, instruction. So I think that's, that's a good, uh, concept you got going there. And it's more than just, you know, it's more than just a uh, wrestling program. It's a, it's a culture, you know, the things that we stand for, we don't, 
we don't have our kids cut weight and we don't have our kids wrestle dual meets every weekend. We mm -hmm. have our kids practice, practice, mm -hmm. practice. You wrestle what you weigh. Sometimes you go up a weight, mm -hmm. right? But just, uh, you know, getting them out of the, getting them out of those habits. And also, you know, we keep our, we have a no parents in the room policy as well. We want those kids focused on what we're teaching. We want them locked in on us. We want, you know, all that stuff is, is very helpful to, for their development, you know, not cut, cutting weight, keeping the, you know, the parents out, out of the room, letting the kids focus and have their time to focus. If I need to correct them, I can correct them without having, you know, uh, you know, a parent reprimand or, or, or something like that, you know? So that's, yeah. Yeah. And I think the cut and weight thing, I mean, that, that's a, a big mistake when kids are learning the sport and, you know, and it, at a certain point you're going to cut weight, but that's later in high school or college, you know, I mean, you know, get better when you're younger, just, just have fun and get better. Um, let's move to, I know we got a big event coming up, the mob and classic. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that event? Uh, I, you know, I, we're a fan, we love watching it every year and, um, you know, just why that's a little bit different than your traditional, uh, wrestling tournament that you got going. Well, that, you know, that's, uh, the mob, the mob and classic is, you know, the Anthony astronaut wrestling classic, the Re Anthony astronaut wrestling invitational, you know, he came in through New Jersey and did something that nobody had done before. And, you know, that's what, that's what the word mobbing means it means to you know have a little swagger to you have have a little you know toughness to you and uh you know that that that's jersey but this year the tournament's absolutely nails tough going with that you know same thing i was talking about before with the cutting weight it's a day of weighing so you weigh in and wrestle so if you want to cut 10 pounds or 12 pounds you're gonna have to wrestle two hours later and that's gonna suck so, you know, might as well wrestle your weight and wrestle your best instead of, you know, cut a bunch of weight and it sucked. Yeah. And it's funny you should say that because the state tournament in Jersey, the uh, youth state tournament, I know, I know we had the same situation where they used to be, you know, night before weigh-ins, kids used to run, you'd see Mountain Hope, you would see them in the hotel doing their thing. Right. And they eat a big dinner that night. Next thing you know, you have a kid who's, you know, 75 pounds, wrestling 68, you know, um, where this year they just flat out, it was six in the morning. We were up, we had to go weigh in and you literally, if you weren't on weight in the morning and you had to cut weight, it was going to take it out. So it was a decision you need to make. But I think the more I've thought about it, I think it is the right way by everything you just said, because we want these kids focusing on wrestling. And I think at this youth level, you want to make sure that these kids, I mean, to your point, this isn't high school. Okay. This isn't college. Okay. You want to be going against kids who are your size. So I think the fact that we're going that direction, I think is a positive hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so let's get in some of these weight classes here. I know we got some, uh, hammers, um, you know, 145. Do we want to, want to talk about that one? Yeah. PJ Duke's one of those guys. So. Yep. PJ Duke. Uh, he's, you know, he's the returning champ. He won the tournament last year. Uh, he's one of the guys to definitely look out for. You got a kid by the name of Anthony Evanitsky, uh, in the, from the Mad Assassins program. He's in on that weight class. You have uh, Joe Davi committed to Princeton. He's in on that weight class. I mean, it's a list of absolute hammers. So, you know, yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of tough guys. Another another one to bring up. I know you're you're from the West Coast. We got people coming all the way in. I know this uh, Slater Hicks from California. A lot a lot of hype around him. Eighth grader. What what do you say about him coming in at 106? And who's his top competition? Slater Slater's tough you know he uh he was actually our mob and media wrestler the year last year he won the mob and classic and he won the dragon nationals both of our events and uh he's actually been in every single one of our events that we've had he comes out he loves the events so much um so that's that's pretty cool is you know been a big supporter of our events uh at that weight class, you're going to have at 106, you're going to have a kid by the name of Tyler Garvin who won the Fargo title at 106 uh, from Maryland. I believe he's a sophomore or junior. Uh, he's going to be the, the favorite at that weight class after winning Fargo this summer. So, I mean, you got Fargo champs. You got plenty of national champs, nationally ranked kids, state champs. I mean, it's uh, a lot of colleges are already 
hitting me up, telling me that they'll be be at the tournament recruiting. So it's really cool. Yeah, let's and just going through the weights. Obviously, we touched on forty five, which is a big weight. One hundred six, you know, guys coming in, but then go all the way up to the top. You got Elijah D, and you got one eighty two, and there's a lot going on in the upper weights as well. So why don't we touch a little bit, kind of on those heavier guys? Yeah, so uh, one eighty two, you have Elijah Diak Mahalis, you have Justin Anello. Um, those are the two off top of my head. Uh, ninety five, you have. Um, let's see who we got, who we got 95. Let me, let me check real quick. Look at this. One ninety-five, you have a kid uh by the name of oh, oh, we're back. You have a kid by the name of Anthony Harris uh from St. Peter's, a kid Hudson Scove. Um a lot of tough kids, a lot of tough yeah. kids. And and what I like about what you guys are doing, we're actually talking about in the broadcast about just the way you guys are promoting it. So obviously kind of the names you were throwing out, having Fargo champs, okay, having big time wrestlers from, from the West Coast comes in, big names like Duke and, and, and Diak and Hollis. But talk to kind of like the pageantry, the light, the promotion, what you guys are doing. Because obviously, Ashley, I know you touched on it, but really speak to that and how it adds to this tournament. We're just trying to create the – the most exciting wrestling environment possible, right? So I think that, uh, you know, promoting wrestling and helping grow the sport, if you're putting on these events, that's, that's part of your job. So, you know, having the kid, having the, the walkouts for the kids, you know, that, that makes it exciting for them. That makes, you know, that gives them, uh, you know, maybe makes them a little bit nervous. So maybe they, they, get that feeling out, out of them and they, and they, you know, they perform better at the next competition and that they, they compete in having these experiences at a young age, almost like NCAA finals experience, all eyes on you. You know, you're, you're, you're the man you're getting interviewed after you're getting, you know, sick swag to, to, to walk out and you're getting a walkout song, just making the experience as exciting as possible. That's good stuff. Good stuff, man. And why don't we pivot, John? So um, obviously you guys are doing a great job with Ashton and do the Mobbing Classic, but we're going to take a couple of questions from the fans. Um, and first question coming up is, what is the best JUCO school in America? So why don't you touch and this on this? Yeah, and this is from, you mentioned them before, Josh Roden. I think this best, is, he, he I mean, that in. Best JUCO school in America, Clackamas Community College, no doubt. Uh, I mean, I think they've won the last three or four national titles. So, I mean, it's pretty undisputed at this point. They do a really great job out there, um, you know, working working with the kids. And JUCO is a little different than, you know, the the Division One level. You get some you get some characters out in JUCO. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been one of them, right? I might have been one of them, well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's good stuff. So another question came from from our man, Jay Klein. And I'm going to tell you, you know, um, you know, one of the I, I would say the two most exciting um, times I seen Jersey Mike's arena erupt was one. Uh, one was Anthony Ashnault when he took he, he took out number one in the country during the Princeton match uh, and won 10 to that place went crazy there. Second one is what we're going to get to in this question. So his question is, what was the greatest comeback in wrestling history? Gable Stevenson winning the Olympics or DeLuca versus Hayes at Jersey Mike's arena? I mean, that's a that's a hard question, you know. Gable Stevenson was only down by one takedown, though. I mean, I was down by six points. But I don't know if it's the greatest comeback ever, you know. I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> there's been plenty of times where, where I mean, Damian Hahn in the NCAA finals hitting a lat drop. That was pretty, That was a pretty cool comeback. I mean, you had Jason Ness, NCAA finals. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. That was a pretty sick that comeback. Was that was a good but, one. But uh, I think what just kind of shocked everyone was uh, – he got thrown twice and they didn't really see that coming. I mean, I had had ACL surgery the year prior. So if you go watch my matches, I wasn't a big, big shooter. My, my senior year it wasn't until after I got healed up a couple of years later, I'm like, damn, I, I can shoot now. I don't have to go out and try to throw everybody. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a fun match. 
it was a cool experience and uh yeah yeah, yeah what, I, I think that's what man, made, I think what, what, I, I can tell John, you real that quick. crowd did go crazy there yeah, what made that match, though, because you touched on it, is when people think about that lat drop, the fact that we're back to back, because I, I think, uh, you know, when you threw that first one down, I think it was five or six nothing. Um, that's the one that Mike Malley had on behind the dirt. The fact that you actually had to hit it again and get out, and that's what actually gave you the win. So the fact that you hit him back to back on a kid who's basically a top five, top 10 roster, just an awesome moment. Um, really good stuff. So yeah, I got to point that out. The fact that you hit that lat drop, not once, but twice. Yeah. And let's, let's be real here. You know, a takedown's cool and all, but you know, when you're talking crowd pleaser, you know, those big throws, they get things going. So that we was all watch uh, vision quest, man. We know uh, that. that was a, that I was agree. a pretty, pretty intense throw, man. We loved it. We loved it. I, I, was front row there. it. I brought my family there that, that one. And I just remember people were going nuts. A guy in front of me was like grabbing a guy's head going crazy. That, that place went, went euphoric during that match, man. That was I, I actually never really uh, drilled that at all. I, I, my friend Dylan real, who was a uh, Juco national champ. He was one of the best high school wrestlers I've ever seen. When we get off this, you got to go check him out. Dylan real highlights. He, he was from Illinois. Nice. His coach was uh, a guy by the name of Brian Medlin. Who's now the Illinois RTC coach. And he's a big Greco guy And Dylan. I re recruited him as my partner at Clackamas. He was a great partner. He, he was a great coach for me. He taught me a lot of technique and he taught me how to throw that summer. Yeah. And I tear my ACL. I'm out in Gilroy, California, working with Greg Varela and the Gilroy Hawks. Uh, and I was teaching technique all summer. And he's like, hey, I want you to teach those throws that, you know, those throws. And I'm like, OK. So I was teaching them all summer how to throw and lat drop for kids. And uh, it's kind of cool because I never really drilled it because my ACL was hurt. and I couldn't drill. But then when it came time to go, I went and everyone's like, oh, this kid's a big thrower. I'm like, actually, that's the first throw I've hit in my life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And now, now that's your thing. So another another question I'm throwing in here. I, I just got I told you I got former Rutgers wrestler Brian Lauer downstairs with the, the two kids, um, Dr. Lauer now. Um, but he wanted to know about the Greco. He, he said, you know, knew, knew you were thinking about wrestling some Greco. Do we got uh, some some more competition in the horizon for you? Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll be Greco. I love Greco, don't get me wrong, but I, I love wrestling and I love grabbing legs and, and taking shots and whatnot. So my plan is right now, you know, to continue to wrestle and train. And, you know, I'll train for three hours a day sometimes just by coaching the kids, you know, mm -hmm. staying in my stance, staying in position, showing technique, getting the reps in. But, um, yeah, my plan is to compete at the U.S. Open this year. Nice, nice. That's going to be exciting. All right. Well, we're going to close out. We're going to do a rapid-fire question. I know you mentioned uh, Dave Vizzini. Uh, he sent me a couple questions for you. We're going to okay. do these quick. I got four questions. Okay. We'll see if we can get them, get them done in, in one minute. So I'm going to throw it at you rapid-fire. Why don't you say a little bit about Dave? What, what, what about, uh, you know, Dave helped you out, I know, early oh. on, right? Coached you a little bit, right? Yeah, he was he was from the same high school as as me, and uh, he played a huge mentor mentoring like role to the kids. I mean, he wasn't in the room all the time, but he was in you know doing camps. And I remember I'd go up and do camps with him up in uh, Oregon City. I think he brought Brandon Slay up one time. That that was really cool. But uh, yeah, he just he would always be around the program, giving back, and that was really cool because he was a four time state champ from my high school. And uh, I would always see him in the room with uh, Nick Amucha Stegi. He, had, he helped him a lot. He was another Phoenix High School guy who ended up being a three-time All-American and two-time uh, finalist. But uh, I always tell I, I'm the second best Phoenix High School wrestler ever. Dave Vizzini is the first best because he's the best because he won four state titles. I won three. Nice. So, nice. Yep. Nice. So good stuff. Good stuff. So let's get into this. Um, let's get into this. You're ready. You're ready. Laser. You ready for these? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Okay. First question. Have you ever milked goats? <laughs> I have. Yeah. That was actually, uh, my job as a kid every morning, 6am every, every, uh, night, 6pm. 
me and my little sister, that, that was our job. So we actually sold the, sold the milk and it, that's why I got strong, uh, strong gorilla hands. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. All right, what's in the water in Phoenix, Oregon that makes it responsible for so many great wrestlers? It's not well water, you know, it's, it's straight, coming straight up from the ground. Uh, and Harry Mondell's culture and tradition that he built there and it's you know he passed away recently but his uh his vision and and what he stood for lives in so many phoenix wrestlers nice nice all right you mentioned your sister before dave wants to know uh why is navina the best wrestler in, in your family why is navina the best wrestler i mean she she's a beast she's tough it's i would have to say because i taught her how to wrestle Nice. Good answer. Good answer. And the last one, most importantly, he wants to know when you're getting the Viz tattoo on. Oh, I don't know about that. I haven't even got my daughter's tattoo on me yet, so I probably got to get that done first. After the daughter, I'll tell him. After the daughter, you're going to get the Viz tattoo. But hey, uh, you know, great hanging out, man. Great, great chatting with you. We're going to be looking for you at the U.S. Open. We're ready for the Modern Classic. Uh, make sure you guys... Follow us, you know, follow follow the show. Follow us on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Make sure you're looking out for us on, on uh, the gram, Instagram. You know, our meme game is through the roof, man. We got the memes out there. Make sure you're checking that out. And talk to you later, guys. Relentless Pursuit, baby.